In today's video, I'm creating my very own 18-man Wonder Kid squad. I'm then going to simulate 10 seasons to see just how successful they can be caught. But here's the catch. For every transfer, I'll be spinning this wheel to decide which nation I'm going to sign a Wonder Kid from. But if I don't want to sign anybody from the nation that the wheel lands on, I will have a second chance as we're playing stick or twist. Which means if we choose to sit, we'll be signing a under-21s player from the nation that the wheel originally landed on. Or we can take a chance and twist and spin the wheel once more, but whatever nation the wheel lands on that time, we'll have to sign a player from no matter what. And hopefully after 10 years of building this squad, we'll have created the most dominant team in Europe. And we're not messing around, we're getting stuck in straight away, but whilst the wheel is spinning, I want to take this time to quickly shout Tom FM out who did this on Football Manager, who gave me this idea to begin with. But our first nation is Kazakhstan. That really isn't the start we were after. I mean, they've literally got no players 21 years old or under on FC24. I mean, we've got no choice but to twist now. I mean, hopefully the next nation that we'll land on actually has players to choose from. Okay, the Netherlands, that's actually a game changer. I mean, we could have our striker straight away and Brian Brobby, a 21 year old from Ajax, who's a very good player already. We could get Ryan Gravenberge, already a very good player playing for Liverpool. Liverpool. And of course, there is Xavi Simons from PSG. However, I'm thinking a little bit more strategically. I'm thinking Bart Verbruggen might be the way to go this time. Think about it. How many good goalkeepers are there under 21s in FC24? Bart Verbruggen has definitely got to be up there, hasn't he? I mean, off the top of my head, guys, there's Van der Voort from Belgium and these rest desk from France. I personally feel like we get the most important position out of the way whilst we can, guys. That's why I'm going to be signing Bart Verbruggen. And that's exactly what I did for 13 million. But whilst we're talking about money, there is some something else we need to talk about. We've now got 986 million to build this team, meaning that if we're on signing number 11 and we run out of money, we can no longer make any signings. What we've got now is what we've got. So whilst it's a lot of money, we've got to be strategic with it because we've got to sign a full starting 11 and an entire bench with that money too. So signing Bart Verbruggen over Xavi Simons long term was definitely the better option out of the two, wasn't it? However, that's one signing down 17 to go and the next country we're going to be signing from is Kosovo. I actually think they've got a couple of ballers in that country. Okay, I was very mistaken. They've only actually got six players who are 21 years old or under on FC24 and their best one is a player called Andy Hotty. I mean, he's not a bad player. However, if we want success long term, guys, I feel like we got a twist. So it's our second twist of the video already. Is it going to pay off like last time? Time? I don't know. Nigeria. Okay, I'm really going into this blind because I really don't know much about that country in terms of wonder kits. However, we've got lucky Gift Auburn, a 20 year old striker who's 74 overall, showing great potential, and he's very cheap too. But we had to activate his release clause to actually sign him, so we've just spent 16.8 mil on Gift Auburn. So now we've got a goalkeeper and a very good striker up top. So far, it's looking pretty good. But can we keep this going? Because we've got a long way to go yet, guys as the next country we're going to be signing from could be Lithuania. And Lithuania is a massive dog, guys. They've only got two players under 21 years old and they're both in their 60 ratings, man. We've got no choice but to twist again. Our third twist in a row, ladies and gents. You can't write this, can you? And this time, we're landing on Turkey. And guys, I completely forgot who Turkey had. Arda Gula, 18, 77 overall with 19 mil. I think it's obvious who I'm signing from Turkey. And he was very cheap too, only costing us 24.8 million. And we've still got 940 mil to spend, guys. I'm not sure if this is good or bad. I mean, we've got 15 signings to make, so I guess only time will tell. As we move on to the wheel, once again for our fourth signing. Oh my god, Guatemala. Have they even got any players in this game? They literally don't have a single player 21 years old or younger on it in this game. EA, what are you playing at? Well, we've got no choice, guys. We've got to twist to see. Oh, actually, that's really good. Portugal, we've landed on one of the big ones. I think we're going to have to be quite strategic about this. There's literally so many players that we could potentially choose 
choose from. I mean, there's right winger Carlos Ford's 19 years old, 72 rated. There's centre mid Zhao Neves, 18 years old, already 77 rated. There's also centre back Goncalo Inacio, 21 years old, 80 overall. And of course, Nuno Mendes, who's already 82 rated at 21 years old. We're quite literally spoilt for choice here, guys. I do not have a Scooby Doo on who I'm going to choose from Portugal. I am leaning towards Zhao Neves, though. I mean, we do have a budget to think about, remember? We've got 15 signings to make, and if we can buy really good players quite cheap, that'll definitely bode well for us and the team long term, won't it? And that's why for 27 and a half million, I've just signed him. And so far, it has to be said, we are looking very tidy after four signings, man. We could do with some defenders in the mix, but we've got another 14 signings to make that happen, haven't we? I hope that not signing a defender from Portugal isn't going to come back to bite me, but we're going to find out anyway. Ekidor is next up. I'm unfamiliar with that. But I need to get familiar, guys, because Piero Hinsape is from Ecuador himself. We were after a defender, and we got one. And he only cost 35 million too. That has taken us to 875 million. But I feel like with five players already signed and only spending 125 mil, that's a decent ratio. And if we can keep this going, we're gonna end up creating a monstrous team. As the next country we're looking at is the Korea Republic. Again, not familiar, but I could be surprised. And to be fair, guys, they've got better place than I thought they would. They got sent about Lee Han Biom, who's only 21 years old, but 70 overall, showing great potential. There's Yang Hyun Jun playing for Celtic, 21 years old, 69 rated. And there's Eom Ji Sung playing for Guangzhou FC. However, I think I'm going to twist, man. I feel like we can land on a better country the next time we spin the wheel. And truth be told, so far, every time we've twisted, it is boded well for... Oh my god, yeah, we've shafted ourselves. Bikini Faso. What have I done? Seeing that though, they've actually got half decent players like Adamo Nagalo, a centre back from FC Nortland, who's 20 and 71 rated. There's Abdul Fasel Tapsoba, I mean, definitely not a decent player, but better than what I thought they'd have. But I'm going to be signing Dango Utara from Bournemouth. Only 21, 72 rated. We just got to convert him to a left winger and he'll be good to go. And he only cost us £5 million as well. The team right now is coming along so freaking nicely. We just need to somehow try to keep this going. But as we all know, that isn't up to me. It depends on what nation we land on next. And it looks like we're going to be scouting to Nizzy next. But their best player is Hannibal Nedgebury, guys. 20 years old, 69 overall. I feel like we can get somebody better if we twist. But am I going to be right, though? So far, every time I've twisted, we've been very lucky. Serbia, okay. I really can't think of any players. 21 years old or under from Serbia off top of my head. They do have one good player though, 21 year old Lazar Samardzic from Udinese, 21, 74 rated, he's cheap as chips as well we're getting so lucky so far and for only 10.5 million guys we've now sorted our midfield trio out, we now just need 3 defenders and a right winger and the starting team can then be left alone because then it's done and dusty, but it all depends on what nation the wheel lands on next, oh this is a big one, England, oh my god we're going to be spoiled for choice See you guys. I mean, there's Cameron Archer, Levi Colwell, Jared Branthwaite, and of course, Jude Ballingham. Who the hell are we going to choose from these four? I mean, the obvious choice should be Jude Ballingham. However, we've already got our midfield sorted out and we've already got Arda Gula in that camera roll. So really, we don't need Jude Ballingham. We also have a striker actually better than Cameron Archer right now. So I don't think we need him. So it's down to Jared Branthwaite and Levi Colwell. And as much as I love Levi Colwell as a Chelsea fan, I feel like the obvious choice is Jared Branthwaite, man. He's too good to pass up. And that indeed means, guys, we've just signed Jared Branthwaite for 29 million. And we've still got 824 mil to spend, guys. I mean, maybe I am being a little bit stingy with this money. I reckon for the next couple of transfers, if we're able to, we go all out. I mean, it does all depend on the wheel, but we can now average 80 mil a player. Estonia. Okay, I honestly don't have a clue. But guys, I think we're twisted. They've got Andreas Vahe, they've got Maxim Pascotzi, and they've also got Carl Hein. None of them above 70 overall yet. No doubt about it, we're twisty. I mean, it can't really get any worse than that, can it, Wheel? I mean, I hope it doesn't. Indonesia, okay. Don't hold your breath, because it might get worse. 
I mean, they've only got four players themselves, with their best being a left back from SC Hurenveen, who's 64 overall. I mean, honestly, they've got one more player than Estonia had, but realistically, they're no better, are they? I'd say that's about even. We've been evenly shafted. I did, however, end up signing Nathan Tejo and none for one million on the dot. Let's just hope that the wheel lands on a better nation next time. That was our first proper L, to be fair, as we land on Finland this time. I'm hoping they do deliver the goods. But guys, I'm looking through these players, and I'll be real with you. I think we're twisting. There's nobody about above 70 overall. I mean, the last time we twisted, it didn't end well for us. Is it going to end up the same this time, or isn't it? Syria. Okay, I really have no idea. Oh my god, we should have stopped. Noah Shamoon is their best player, a 20-year-old left midfielder from freaking Randers FC. Off the top of my head, we've missed out on a couple of half-decent right-wingers, a couple of decent centre-backs as well, all because we thought we'd get better, but now we have to pay the price for that. I mean, the price we paid was only one 1.4 million however that was a waste of a transfer and with us only having eight transfers left to make we need to lock in now okay this looks good romania off the top of my head i think i can think of at least one good player we can buy from this country but guys i think i was mistaken the players i was thinking of must be over 21 years old because i'm not seeing any of them in this list we could however sign radu dragerson he's 21 he's 72 overall a decent defender but we've already got brandweight and in Sapek. But I'm leaning in a different direction. I'm going for Octavian Popescu from FC SB. He's 21. He's 69 rated. We haven't got a right winger, so this is literally perfect as well. And because his contract was running out, we only had to spend 2.8 million on him too. And looking at the team now, guys, it is really coming together nicely. We just need a right back and a left back. Hang on, we don't need a left back. Where the hell's that Nathan Tejou guy? I mean, you can clearly see I bought him. I'm not too sure why he's not in the team. But we can worry about that later. For now, we need to worry about what nation we are buying from. Oh, that's a big one, France. Okay, we need to make this count now. We've got a lot of money still to spend. And you know, guys, I am gutted. I added to me head that Kylian Mbappe was 21 for some reason. He's 24 years old, meaning, obviously, we can't sign him. But if I'm being honest, guys, I'm disappointed in France's under-21s. I mean, there's nobody, really, that's absolutely amazing that's standing out from the rest. I mean, there's Bradley Barcola, a 20-year-old, 80-rated left or right winger. We could sign him, but we've already got our front three sorted. There's Magnez Akliushi, a 21-year-old right midfielder who's 76 rated, but again, our front three is sorted. I think Malo Gusto is our best option. He's 20, he's 78 rated already, and right now, we desperately need a right back, so he fits the bill and then some. And just like that, guys, for 13 and a half million, we've officially completed our starting team. And looking at the starting team now, guys, overall, I think we've done a phenomenal job of putting it all together. Every sign we make now will either be going on the bench or or if they're good enough, we'll be replacing the players we've got in the starting team. So right now, guys, we can kind of relax. I mean, we've still got 785 million to spend for goodness sake, man. I mean, to be fair, I did expect to have bigger players to choose from, but the only big one we've really had is Jude Ballingham, and we didn't need him. But hopefully this wheel lands on a couple of massive countries from now until the end. Oh, that's not good. Gambia, that's really not good. But to be fair, their best play is not bad at all. Jan Kubit, Minter, an 18-year-old right winger playing for Newcastle, who's 72 overall. However, guys, with the amount of money we've got left, I want to twist and see if we can land on a top 10 country. I want to try and spend as much money as possible. I mean, is this going to work? I have absolutely no idea. Only time will tell. Oh! Okay, Bulgaria. I mean, that does sound promising. However, guys, it wasn't. It really wasn't promising. These three are the only three players, 21 years old or under, from Bulgaria, and their best players are 64 rated, man. I really have just shafted myself, haven't I, guys? I mean, we can decide between these pair to sign. I mean, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The only thing they're going to be doing is bench warming. But in the end, guys, I did end up signing Philip Krastev for 1 million on the dot. However, However, guys, we're moving swiftly on to this wheel again as it lands on freaking Northern Ireland. Come on, man. Where's Argentina? Where's Brazil? Where's freaking Germany? To be fair, though, they've got Connor Bradley, a 20-year-old right back who's 74 rated. All we need to do is convert him to a left back, and he goes straight into the starting team. And what's even better, guys, he only cost us 9 million to sign. 
And look at that, guys. Lovely, jubbly. However, looking at the team properly, I don't even think we're going to survive our first season in the Premier League. However, long term, we may just become one of the best in the world. But in fairness, we do have five more signs to make, and those five could be game-changing. We are going to be buying from the United States next, though. I don't know if that's good or bad. To be fair, they do have Giovanni Reina, a 20-year-old right midfielder who could be a very good addition to our front three. I mean, I know this there's still some big countries left on that wheel, but I know just how good Giovanni Reina can become long term, and I quite frankly don't want to take that chance on losing out on a player this good. So with that being said, I've just spent 22 million to make sure that Giovanni Reina plays for us. But we do still have four signings to make to complete the 18-man squad, and the next team we're going to be signing from is Albania. Actually, I feel like that's a good country to buy from. Then again, I could be wrong, guys. They've only got six players to 21 years old or under. But two of those players are Armando Broha and, of course, Christian Aslani from Inter Milan. However, I'm not exactly satisfied with the choice I've got. I'm going to spin that wheel again. I'm going to twist. I really hope now that I've done this, it isn't going to come back to bite me in the backside. Okay, Armenia. Who's good from Armenia? As it turns out, nobody. Oh, my God. I've done it again, haven't I? Why do I keep doing this to myself? I get cocky and then I get my absolute backside added to me on a plane. I feel like it's obvious who I'm signing though, guys. 21-year-old Edgar Savitkian. I don't know if we got that name right, but he's only worth 1.6 mil, so we're not going to spend more than 2 million on this guy. I've got to admit, though, I slightly overestimated how expensive this team would be. We've still got 746 million to spend, so unless that wheel lands on big nations, we're not spending even half of this money now. I mean, I'm hoping for an Argentina, a Belgium. I didn't ask for Trinidad and Tobago, though. Oh, my lord. That's woeful i wasn't kidding either guys they've got three players 21 years old or younger and none of them even crack over 60 rating we're twisting without a shadow of a doubt come on wheel you've been good to me so far don't turn on me now for goodness sake uruguay okay that's a country i can work with i mean i thought he was at least but these are the best players 21 years old and under from uruguay i've got to say i have been let down there I feel like I'm going to sign Sebastian Pasali though. I mean, he's the best out of a bad bunch and he's only going to be a bench warmer anyway, isn't he? He only cost us 5 mil, but there he is on the bench. And I've just realised by counting the players on the bench, we've only got one more transfer to make. We've made 17 signings now. So I really hope that this last spin of the wheel is going to land on a big nation. Okay, Slovakia. I'm not getting my hopes up here, guys. I mean, their best player is Thomas Susla from Hellas Verona. I mean, considering this is literally the last signing of this 18-man squad, you better believe I'm going to twist. Come on, wheel. It's the last spin. Give me something freaking good. Oh, you're kidding me. Peru, we were one team away from getting Italy. We should have stopped, man. Their best player is Stefano Alonso. 20 64 overall yeah i'm not very good at this game am i but ultimately he is our 18th and final signing to complete the team as we spent 1.2 million on him which means that this is the team overall that we have created going in to this video and i'm actually quite happy with it i'm especially happy we got the Bruggen straight away man i feel like he's going to be a game changer for us long term our bench on the other hand isn't looking too amazing but to be honest guys we've got a very good start 11 and that's all that really matters but now that the team is built ladies and gents it's now time to see how they're going to get on over the next 10 years so i'm going to catch up with these guys at the very end of season one well it's safe to say guys it's not been a good start for the team they've just about survived their first season in the premier league i guess the only positive thing from this is the only way is up no FA Cup either as Man City won it. And Man City also won the Carabao Cup. And as you can see from the stats, guys, it's not been that good at all. I mean, there has been goals scored, however, not many. But you look at the team and the improvement, frankly, guys, has been nothing short of amazing, man. I don't know how we've done so poorly. The good news is, though, guys, this is how the team is going to look going into the next campaign. So he is hoping that we can do a little better in Season 2. And we've done way better in Season 2. We are now in the top eight. Eight, and we are actually not far off getting into Europe. However, we still can't win the FA Cup as Liverpool won it this time. But at the very least, Arsenal beat the bottle jobs to win the Carabao Cup. 
But the stats, on the other hand, aren't that much better than last year, so I'm actually quite confused on how we've done better this year. But you look at the team overall, guys, and Jesus, it's obvious why we've done so well. This team is borderline world-class already. I mean, if it looks this good right now, could you imagine how good it's going to look in Season 10? But whilst the team's getting better every year, we're not performing better because we've dropped to 10th in the Premier League. What's that about? And we still haven't won the FA Cup. But this time we have won the Carabao Cup. So if I'm not mistaken, that gives us Europa Conference League football next year. And I'd say that's good timing because these stats do actually look a little bit better despite us doing worse in the Premier League. But I'm looking at this team, guys, and I'm feeling fairly confident that in Season 4, we may just take the Europa Conference League by storm and absolutely thrash everybody in it. Well, never mind Europe for a sec. Look at how much better we've done in the Premier League, seven points away from being the best team in England. Mark my words, guys, it's not going to be long before we make winning the Premier League standard procedure. But we still can't win the FA Cup, can we, as Man City do it this time? If we don't go back to back winning the Carabao Cup, as Aston Villa beat West Ham to do that. As for how we did in Europe, I'm very disappointed to be honest. We made it to the round of 16 before getting knocked out by young boys of all teams. But moving on from Europe for a second, these stats are looking pretty decent and we're getting consistently better each and every year. I mean, it certainly helps that we've got one of the best teams in the world at this point. I mean, it definitely sucks that the Bruggen's our one and only keeper. That, to be fair, may be a big reason why we didn't win the Premier League or the Conference League this year. But I think from Season 5 onwards, this team is going to bring us a hell of a lot of success. Unfortunately, we're not going to see it yet in the Premiers. Once again, we just miss out on the title by two points this time. And we lost the FA Cup final against Newcastle United. Come on, man. We've got to be beating them. We also don't win the Carabao Cup as Liverpool did. And as for Europe, guys, we matched up against PSG in the quarters. And as you can see, they did teach us a lesson in football. But looking at the stats, guys, I'd actually say these are the best we've seen so far to the five seasons simulating. I mean, it's definitely the best starting team we've seen so far. Oh my days, almost everybody's 90 overall now. But I think this team right now is probably one of the strongest in the world. So over the next five years, I'm actually quite curious to see how many trophies we actually pick up. And guys, as season six ends, it's already begun. We finally won the Premier League by three points. Won the Kid FC are the best team in England. We've also finally won the FA Cup after beating West Ham to do it. We still can't win the Carabao Cup again, though, as somehow the bottle jobs have won it. But we finally won the Champions League, guys. It's taken us six years, but we've beaten New Day to do it in the end. But to be fair, looking at the play statistics, man, I'd be more surprised if we didn't win what we'd done this year. And the scary thing is, man, this team isn't even out of second year yet. I reckon a couple of quadruples are definitely on the horizon. And Season 7 could be the year we do it, guys, as we've once again won the Premier League. But we somehow lost the FA Community Shield to the freaking bottle jobs. How do we let that happen? But we have once again won the FA Cup. But we still can't win the Carabao Cup again. And we lost to Inter in the Super Cup. How many finals are we going to bottle, honestly? Well, thankfully, not another one, as we've beaten the bottle jobs to win the Champions League back to back the best team in the world. And as for the stats, guys, I think they're pretty damn good, especially when you take into account that six players scored more than 10 goals this year. And looking at the team now, honestly, I think so far in FC24, this is the best overall team we've ever built, and there's still three seasons to go. And truth be told, guys, I think we're in for three quadruple in a row i mean the team is absolutely world class so there's no reason why these guys can't pull that off and this is what i mean guys we are once again the premier league champions and not only that we almost did it with 100 frigging points and this time we have indeed won the community shield so that's trophy number two but fair play to burnley they won the fa cup but we finally won the Carabao Cup once again, so that's trophy number three. And the quadruple secured with trophy number four being the Super Cup. But we can't make it five as Dortmund beat us to win the Champions League final. Oh, come on, man. Five trophies would have been amazing. And truth be told, guys, looking at these stats, I think we bloody deserved it, man. Reina with 36 and 6 and Auburn with 34 and 5. That's amazing. And the scary thing is, this team is just getting better and better every single year. And I completely maintain what I said last year. We are definitely won for three quadruples in a row. And it's another good start to doing that as we've once again won the Premier League. 
but barely beat us to win the Community Shield. What on earth is that about? And there's no FA Cup win for us this time either as Arsenal ended up winning it. And Leicester won the Carabao Cup. To be honest though, I'm not too fussed about this because they beat the bottle jobs to do it. But we've had a stinker in the Champions League. Real Madrid knocked us out in the round of 16, 5-3 on aggregate. I mean, the stats do look pretty damn good still, don't get me wrong, but one trophy from a possible five this year, that's woeful for how good our team is. I mean, just look at the state of it for goodness sake. They do have one more chance to win as many trophies as they possibly can. It's just a question now of whether they're going to take that chance or not. Well, so far, it looks like the Oilers. We've once again won the Premier League, this time in seriously convincing fashion. Not only did we get at least 25 points between ourselves and the Hammers, but we've won it with over 100 points. Man, that's insane. If we perform half as well in every other competition as we have in the Premier League, we've won everything this year. And look at this. We've won the FA Community Shield, beating Arsenal to do it. And we've won the FA Cup. That's the treble already. But Bournemouth won the Carabao Cup. There is still a chance for the quadruple, though. And we've taken that chance beating West Ham United 2-1 to win the Champions League. But the bigger question is, guys, what the hell are the Hammers doing in the UCL final? But in fairness, I'm not too fussed. As these are the stats we end this takeover with, man. What a freaking year for the boys. And 10 years after building this Wonder Kid tab where we could only sign one player per nation, this is how it looks. I'd say we've done our job pretty damn well with this squad, wouldn't you? Especially when we've won 16 trophies overall with Auburn being our top goal scorer and Arda Gula being our top assistant. But that's where we're going to wrap things up guys. If you have enjoyed this video be sure to leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you are new around here. But if you enjoyed this Wonder Kid video you should click this one right here when I took over a team of under 18 Wonder Kids only.